What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I got something extra special for you. This is a really hotly awaited survival game. Which has me amped up because we don't really see survival games altogether that much anymore. They seem to have been in vogue for like a very brief window in like 2015 that gave us like Green Hell and The Long Dark and a whole bunch of sort of asset-y knockoffs. I expected survival games to really develop as a niche after those two big hits, though, and it just kind of never happened. We're playing Pacific Drive today. This is a post-apocalyptic survival game where you are on a road trip in a panel station wagon, the likes of which I haven't seen since I was like nine years old. This car right here, everybody's mom had this car when I was probably in the second grade, I guess, was when you saw these the most frequently. But the game is like jalopy if you put it in the post-apocalypse. The point of the game is to keep your car running and scavenge things and build up your car Mad Max style as you work your way towards whatever terminus your journey has waiting for you. The developers, out of the kindness of their own heart, have fired over the game. So we're going to take a look at it for about 30 minutes. The game doesn't come out for a month or two, but hopefully this will at least get you interested or let you know whether it's not the kind of game you want to play. Uh, I've got a link for you down below in the description. You can check that out on Steam if you wanted to wishlist the game or get more information. You'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down there. But let's go ahead and start the game off. Let's do this thing. In 1947, the Olympic Peninsula became the staging ground for a promising new technology. As rumors of its utopian creation spread, so did stories about overnight evacuations, unsolved disappearances, and unnatural encounters. In 1955, the government walled off a section of the peninsula to establish the Olympic Exclusion Zone. For 30 years, the zone's borders grew until the government withdrew and sealed every access point. What happened inside was never disclosed. Stay on the roads, huh? All right, well, we've been dropped off in the Olympic Peninsula in 1998, so I guess this has a little bit of like a stalker-inspired vibe going on, too. I hadn't really considered that. Uh, so we've got our wipers over there. We've got our lights on that left-hand side. I didn't know if I was going to have to use the shifters or anything. Let's get on the road. Looks like we've been given... Can I, like, zoom in with any of my keys here? I'm actually having trouble reading the dashboard right there. The numbers look a little bit fuzzy to me. I can see kind of where we're at with temperatures, and I can see kind of where we're at with fuel. The speedometer is fine. Like, that's okay. That's no biggie. But the fuel meter is very, very small. I can guess with certain lighting effects being thrown across the dash, that's going to be tough to see. So I was hoping if I held down right-click or something, it would make my character, like, squint or, like, zoom in a little bit further uh, for looking at finely grained stuff. It said to stay on the roads, but if I see a point of interest, dude, I'm just going to go for it. What do we got over here? Oh, we've got like a, a sideway we can go. What's up with the tunnel? Can I get out of the car? It doesn't actually look like I have a way to get out of the car just yet. I'm guessing that's what the shifter's for is I can put it in park. It's weird that our car has no reverse, but I guess it's all included inside drive. Let's go ahead and head on down the road. I'm going to put some speed on the dash. You guys don't know this about me in real life, but I'm a speed demon. I like to drive really, really, really fast. Like, my heart doesn't even go up above, like, 50 beats per minute until I'm up above, like, 105, dude. I like to put a buck and some change on the dash every chance I can possibly get. We'll turn on the, li the wipers right there. I don't know what that is, but it looks like maybe a wall that, like, possibly the government put up. What was that, dude? I just heard something run through the bushes. Oh, that's not a good feeling. I don't like that one tiny bit, dude. Little burned out car on the side of the road right there too. Lots of obstructions on the road from landslides and rockfall and whatnot. I guess you don't really consider the way that all these roads are gonna deteriorate real, real fast the second that there isn't like a Caltrans to take care of it. 
And of course, our first tunnel, which is probably going to serve as the tutorial for turning on the lights. Yeah, I was going to say, you've played enough video games, you start to recognize the tutorialization of just about it. Like, you notice the controls and things, and you're pretty sure they're going to come up soon. I don't want to be inside this tunnel right now. A tunnel that hasn't been maintained for 60 or 70 years? Eh. I'm a geologist. We do, like, soil substrate analysis for tunnels like that and whatnot. That thing was probably built in, like... hell is that sound? Uh, what does that say? Warning. High R levels facility extreme caution advised. For further inquiries, direct them to gate C to B. The hell are R levels? Oh, dude, come on. Honestly, this kind of reminds me of the the FEMA camps from Days Gone or whatever. Can't even read what that sign says. Doesn't look like they're letting me get out yet either. Otherwise, I'd investigate the place a little bit closer because I'm just wild and crazy like that. I'm just the kind of guy that I, I break out AKS-74 U and we go inside facility we kill a monster, we fight. Oh, okay. Apparently, monster summon magic rocks in the middle of road and damage axle. Not good. This is only gonna get worse, isn't it? Oh, buddy. Okay, alright, Polter guys, calm down. Everything's fine. That's a really, really, really big... Okay. That's a really big dam or wall or whatever it is. Oh, dude, I don't think we should be here. That does not seem like a natural phenomena. Oh, did we just get EMP'd? Oh, no, 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 no. I think we definitely got EMP'd. We got EMP'd on. Oh, is that my wheel, dude? That can't be... Tell me that's not the wheel to my little Toyota Technical, dude. I don't think my wheel is supposed to go... Oh, my door's over there, dude. Is it maybe maybe it'll like reassemble it. Oh no, dude, my little engine. It's kind of rusty. I don't think it should be that rusty. Get to safety? I feel like as far as mission objectives go, that's kind of unlikely from where we're sitting. This whole area seems like it, it's probably unapologetically unsafe. Maybe go that way. I don't know if it's worth it to go check inside other areas, though. Like, I'm a bit of an explorer. You guys know that about me. So I always kind of want to look around and see if there's anything off the beaten trail. All right, we'll go under. Oh, my God, the crouch is a toggle. I'm so happy. So many games make me hold down control for crouch. And, man, that's your hand in, like, a really awkward position for long periods of time. I got to have the toggles, man. I likes my toggles. I guess I can kick over trees and stuff too. I've learned all kinds of new abilities that I have today. Uh oh, someone out there? Hello? Uh, what a swan, eh? Uh, never mind. <laughs> Francis, the radar's acting up again. He was supposed to tune up this piece of junk years ago. Is the car sentient? Is the car talking to me or is the radio talking to me? Honestly, if the car is a sentient stalker car from the middle of the exclusion zone, I'm going to love that, like, indiscriminately, dude. I always wanted to have, like, a cool kit car friend. All right, we'll do a summer tire right there. So the wheel is now on. 
Is there any kind of like highlight objects mode that I can go into? Like any kind of like stalker vision that shows me where stuff is laying around so the wheel's right there. Oh, I thought they were talking about a steering wheel too. I guess I didn't check. I'm missing a headlamp too. Like we're gonna get pulled over, man. The popo aren't gonna like this. Car's pulling kind of hard to the right, so I'm definitely getting the distinct feeling that we need a wheel alignment. I don't know what's going on here, but it does not want to drive straight. Is this thing working? They, 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 they don't have a transmitter. We won't hear a thing back. Huh. But if they're stranded, could they mean they're from outside? They're a preacher. Hey, hey, how did you get through the barrier wall? No one's gotten into the zone in ages and lived to tell about it. And if we don't get them to safety, this one won't either. That's a good point. Hey, hey you're in serious danger. The instability's closing in, and it's gonna scramble you quicker than beef in a blender. The closest shelter is a few miles east. Get there however you can, and be quick about it. It's really hard to express how hard I'm fighting with this car right now. Like, it does not want to drive straight at the moment at all. I don't know if it's just because we're in a vehicle that's not built for overlanding, and we're overlanding, or aren't we stopped at a gas? Fantastic. Siphon fuel! Yeah, dude, one of my earliest memories in life is my dad chasing a guy down the street with a brick because he caught him in our front yard. Oh, I, put, I probably should put that in park. Hold on. There we go. We probably wanna we probably wanna use the handbrake too on that one. But anyways, one of my earliest memories in life is my dad in the 80s chasing a guy down the street with a brick who was siphoning gas out of his truck. <laughs> he got up in the morning and some local idiot was trying to siphon gas out of his car. My dad got a free gas can out of it though. I think he still has that gas can to this day. Alright, so we gotta siphon fuel out of this thing. Check your trunk for a fuel can. Let's go. I'm paying attention to direction. God, this car is a a beater piece of shit, dude. <laughs> this thing is... Oh, what is that, dude? Apparently it was stuck with Eldridge boogers to the side of the car. Oh, we didn't do it the manly way with your mouth. There we go. We got it taken care of. I don't know if this would work, though, because, like, if these cars broke down, looking at the body style... That's definitely like a 70s, 80s model, probably middle 80s. It's probably still good. Never mind, it's 1998. I was going to say, gasoline goes bad. A lot of people don't know that. Gasoline only lasts for a couple of years if you don't keep it sealed off from the air. It goes bad pretty quickly. That's why I always find it funny when you're playing like some kind of post-apocalyptic game that's like 200 years after the fall, but you're still getting gas out of rusted out cars. All right, we'll put that right there. Most gas, I think, only lasts a couple of years, though, if you leave it in, like, an open can or something. Yeah, I would like to leave now, please. That's something I feel very passionate about. I feel I feel very passionate about leaving. That's kind of where I'm at. Come on. Let's go. I'm really fighting with this wheel right now. There it is again, that flip on the spectrometer. I've seen that way before, before, but where? That can't be. There hasn't been one in decades. Look at that spectral fingerprint. Tell me that doesn't match the remnants exactly. No, no, no. What, what we should be looking at is how fast this preacher seems to be moving. Huh. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say they're going about the speed of a... No way. No way to not tell me. They found a remnant and it's a car this time? Holy cripes! No one's had working wheels in here for ages. Boy, I've killed to know how a combustion engine's still chugging away out there. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, the preacher needs to get to safety. Then we can look into whether that car is a remnant or not. In my heart of hearts, I already know. Then back, baby. Yeah, I'm guessing the wheel's fighting with me so hard because we're off-road and we're on, like, summer street tires 
in a station wagon would be my guess. I'm definitely getting that feeling. You guys ever play spin tires? It kind of feels like that when you start out with like the crappiest vehicle in the game, but you're going through mud. It kind of feels like that. It's got that feeling to it. I ain't gonna like you poking around it, Dan, but better to face a bad side than let the zone eat you alive. Okay, I'm just trying to get through this, man. I don't even know how I got here. Do I want to ram through this? It's a keep out, but... Okay, car takes a little bit of damage. Um, Do I have a map? Drive east to find shelter. Okay, this isn't east. This is southwest. But I'm going to go check this place out. Maybe we find something to fix up the car with. Oh, wheel just come off. Okay, yep, wheels aren't supposed to go away from the car. It's a little concerning. What's all over my face right now, dude? I have, like, mad goobers at the moment. I got the sleepy dust, bro. Is there a gas tank on this thing? No. Okay. Throw that in right there. Uh, can I go retrieve my wheel since we're... Oh, no, it's just off. Okay, that's not going back on. We must have lost the lugs or something then. Okay. Do I have a flashlight or anything? Do I want to go inside the creepy red building with the red light? Uh, let's look on the outside of the building first for anything that might be useful. And then I'll go inside the scary-looking location. It looks like we found the road, though, which is really good. That kind of makes me wonder what's off to the left. I'm going to need, like, a med kit or something, too. We're taking damage out here. Nothing particularly interesting up on the roof. It's not the cache of, you know, guns and money that I was hoping it would be. Flip a breaker switch. All right, I'll get to it in a minute. Just going to look around for a second first and make sure. So is this door all good? Is it latched from the other side? Oh, it's latched from the other side. Strong possibility, then, that I'm going to have to jump off the roof to get to the front to open the latch, which is on the outside, which is foreboding and interesting. Not sure how I feel about that. Why would the latch be on the outside of the door? What's in here with me right now? Who's there? Oh, the shop. God, it's been breached. You've got five seconds to get the hell out before I... Oh, my head. Uh, it's an emergency broadcast. Hello, uh, attention. This message is for Dr. Ophelia Turner. We've sent a breacher to your garage on um, official zone business. Now, we have it on very good authority that this person is in possession of a remnant which has taken the form of a car, and, well, uh... Oh. Get off the remnant thing. She's not gonna care. Um, uh, right, like I said, super officials own business. Protocol, uh, demands that you keep them alive until we can get them to safety. Now, if you do not comply, I will occupy this broadcast channel with a recitation of the entire collection of poems I've personally written. That's 10 years and 17 volumes, and... <laughs> That Arda didn't build that 300 meter wall out there for fun. Unless you're one of the unfortunates who got zapped through. Wait, I just remembered. I don't give a damn why or how you got here. You're trespassing, and I'd kindly like you to get the hell out of my zone. Oh, God, unfortunately. The barrier wall is as fortified against breaches trying to get in as it is against anyone or anything trying to leave. We have to find you a way out. So you might as well start by fixing up that car. Just don't break anything in my shop with those soft hands of yours. All right. I'm going to go borrow your Oculus Rift. Is that cool? I'm going to take your Oculus. Okay, all right. First aid station over here. Feeling pretty good. I don't know what was inside of there, but it's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with me. The little paladone can't fix. We're all right. Significantly higher than I was previously, 
but also feeling pretty good right now. Feeling pretty solid. I stepped on a pine cone yesterday in real life, and so I know what it feels like to be wounded. I run, so I'm a runner. Like, I, I run, I'm a distance runner. I run five miles every other day, and I love running. Well, the city didn't clean up, like, six inches of leaves that are all over the sidewalks since, you know, fall. And so, anyways, there was a pine cone under a pile of leaves that I was going through. Stepped on it, rolled my ankle, and now the whole top of my foot is like a giant purple bruise. Don't think I broke anything. I've been an athlete for most of my life, so, like, I know what a broken bone and, like, a muscle tear and all that kind of stuff feels like. I think I'm perfectly fine, but I know what it feels like to be wounded. I had my own wounding experience yesterday at the hands of nature's most deadly companion, the pine cone, a.k.a. the ankle grenade. Alright, now that we got the wheel back on... Oh, uh, okay, I thought it was saying repair the car door. What does that do? Just opens the car door without me getting in? Okay. I was just- I'm trying to get the specificity of the controls down. So that inevitably when something goes horribly wrong and I have to do all this stuff under duress I will be able to react quickly and understand the various attributes of my wood paneled station wagon All right put her over the pit there we go cars off Now out of the car uh, so replace your car door Oh, dude, we've got like a Tarkov-style fiddly-diddly inventory! I love it. Fiddly-diddly inventories are the best of the inventories. All right, we got to replace a car door. How do we replace a car door? Is there a car door around here? Add it to my to-do list. So it looks like we can actually craft a door. So this is like a significantly more complex version of Jalopy. We also get resistances from the various equipment that we put on our car. So that's pretty cool. All right, it's on my to-do list. Gather items from the abandoned car behind the garage for the checklist. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so we've got a crude panel over here. I couldn't do anything to the car without toolboxes and stuff, so we've got a pry bar right there. Can we rotate this stuff? We can. Look at the smoothness of that rotation animation. Oh my god, this is inventory dopamine for my soul. All right, so we've got... This bad boy right here. We've got to equip the pry bar. All right, how do I equip the pry bar? In my hand. There we go. I'm crowbarred out. Crude panels open, and we've got ourselves a road flare, and we've got ourselves five pieces of plastic. Sounds good. Is there anything else that we can kind of, like, mess with over here? Fuel caps or anything? That's that's a door right there. Looks like one to me anyways. So looking around the rest of the car, I don't think there's much more that I can do with it right now. Over here, we do have a, a friendly dumpster. Well, that's good. Oh, my goodness. Great. All right. I don't know what the goobers are all over this. But, oh, my God. What is that bad mamma jamma? What? Okay, all right. Rip and tear until the job is done. Gotcha. There we go. Now we're... There it is. Yup. Now we're... Now we're doing some heavy metal out here. Yeah. Got it. All right, so I've got plastics. I've got scrap metal. I've got all kinds of goodies in here. We've got like a, a summer tire laying around right there. Sure, scrap that too, man. Why not? I mean, if it can be destroyed, break the whole thing down. So, did those go... Okay, those go in the inventory proper. I didn't know if there was going to be a separate inventory for crafting items. We need another bit of glass, though. So, I'm going to need to track that down. All right. I think we're good. So, now we just got to craft the door. So, we will go into our blueprints. And apparently, I'm just gifted with the power to make a rad-ass door. Like, I just know how to do that. It looks like we need to use a workbench, though, in order for that to work, because, you know, crafting video games. So there we go. We've got our car door. It looks like an absolute piece of garbage, but then again, I made it out of an absolute piece of garbage. So that kind of makes sense to me. Uh, we will just, I guess, slap the bad boy on there. Hey, one more door to protect me from whatever's out there in the zone. I'm okay with it. Man, these panels, dude, they look terrible. 
Get repair putty from the locker. Okay. All right, putty buddy. What you doing over here? Uh, we got an extra tire. That's sick. A steel sheet as well. First aid kits. Repair putty. All right. That's what it wants me to have. Uh, we got our repair putty back. I don't know how much of it I have. Not enough would be my estimate. Uh, but it looks like we can repair structural parts out here with the repair putty. I would say probably not the worst idea to maybe fix the hood a little bit. Oh, wow, dude. That worked so much better than I expected. Okay. Just like in real life, it looks like we're going to solve every bodywork problem by just applying Bondo and hoping for the best. This appears to be some kind of specialized nano Bondo, though, that has, like, a wood texture and everything going on while I'm fixing up the car. We're in the trenches right now. Oh, it's pulling to the right because it looks like our tire is out, maybe? I don't know. Does that tire look... It looks kind of flat to me, but I can't tell if it's just the way that it's parked. All right, bumper's done. That got us back up to 100%. Headlights are looking a little rough. Let's keep those all nice and patched up. Definitely want to be able to use headlights at some point. This is all repaired. It don't look that repaired to me. But sure, dude, fix the tires. That also feels like something an intelligent person would do. Scan the flat. That's why it was pulling to the right. We had a flat tire, but the game never said anything about it. That makes sense while I was trying to think of whether it was like off-roading or what because, man, I was fiddling with this thing non-stop. All right, so we can repair the flat by crafting and using a ceiling kit. Probably going to have to do this over here. Ceiling kit. We have the stuff for it, so let's craft the ceiling kit. There it is. Oh, and it automatically puts it. Oop, I threw it. I thought I was going to aim down sights because it was in my hand if I right-clicked. Nice, dude. Okay. Mechanics kit. We gotta craft one of these, I think. So there we go. Mechanics kit, good to go. Although I may have one in my inventory, and so we can fix a loose wheel. You sure it's loose? There we go. Oh, you gotta diagnostic it first. That's, yep, that's how a wrench works. Is that one okay? Okay, that tire's all right. Install cardboard boxes in your trunk. All right. Cool, man. Yep. I think it just wants me to throw those in the trunk, but I'm not super sure. It said install crafting materials in the trunk, but I'm not exactly sure what it wants. Oh, there we go. I thought it was flagging the toolbox. Oh, we can get, like, a, a trunk workshop. Hell yeah, dude. There's a little prototype of mine in the garage. The arc device. Hook it up to your car wherever it'll fit. This kind of seems like the sort of thing that I'm not it's qualified to use. To your tour guide. It's your North Star and the only way back to safety. Heck, you should consider it the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit if you plan on staying alive. That's how important this thing will be to you. Yes, that's my very own invention. And I'll tell you more about it if you live long enough to use it. I think I'm going to swap these tires real quick, too, because this one has full HP. So, like, why wouldn't I? There you go. We got a fresh tire on there now. Uh, download crafting blueprints. Cool, cool, cool. Gear. Gotcha. And then an impact hammer. Also probably a good thing to have. I like these. And this game clearly had, like, a lot of work put into it. Somebody cared about this. All right. Use the pump to fill the fuel tank. Pump to fill the fuel. Oh, yeah, dude. No siphoning for me, dude. We got the official facilities. All right. Gas cap. Let's get you out of the way. Give me a nice fill. I wonder if this is a game with a fail state. Like, can you lose at this game? You know what I mean? All right. That's all filled up. Throw the switch to charge the battery. Oh, that seems... Really unsafe. This is probably not up to code. All right, select a destination using a map on the wall. This is the zone. Within these borders, all matter has lost the ability to hold a constant physical state. 
What that means is the shape, size, and makeup of just about everything constantly changes. A mile of grass can turn into ten miles of swamp in the blink of an eye, and it does. Constantly. It's caused by something we call instability. We're completely surrounded by it, and once you've watched it chew through entire mountain ranges, you'll understand that you don't want to get anywhere near it. We can only survive in here within pockets of stability. That's what you're standing in now. And that's what you're seeing mapped on the route planner. If we're going to find you a way out of the zone, you'll need to build a new antenna. Until then, you won't be able to detect stabilized routes beyond your immediate area. So, you've got to go hunting for parts, and that means taking a drive. Go on, pick a route. The Octavice in your car will then show you where you need to go. That's really good voice acting. Did you hear what that voice actress just did? She made a strange sound on her voice to simulate the fact that she was sift shifting around in her chair or, like, sitting up in her chair. Like, a, just a slight strain in the voice. That actress has talent. She's good. <laughs> She's real, real good. Make a left out of the garage, follow the access road. All right. Let's go over here. Pop in the car. Okay. First road trip. Let's do this thing. Hopefully the car will... Hey, it's not pulling to the right. All right. Good stuff, man. So where are we trying to go? We're trying to go left? Okay. Off we go to the left. Let's do this thing. What does that panel do right there? What is that for? Abilities? My car gets, like, magic MMORPG hotkey powers? Yo, if my car gets a death ray... I hope my car gets a death ray so that I can shoot monsters, like, so that if a snork or something tries to come and get me, I'll just, just take him out, you know, or if we gotta, like, beef with duty for a little bit. Oh, what was that? Oh, it's a zone transition. That scared me, dude. I got scared. All right. Let's cruise on down the road and see how this goes. Okay, newbie. I'll keep this simple. Don't want to overwhelm that little brain of yours. You'll need a few things to rebuild the antenna at the garage. First on the list is plasma. The woods are littered with plasma generators. Look for a research trailer or a spot tower. But that's those antenna things zapping you when you get too close. Both are always accompanied by plasma generators. Okay. I like how it adjusts the base levels. The device is picking up on some plasma generators nearby. Are those zombies? What are Use those? It on the plasma generator and it'll figure out the tools you need. No, but there's something here. Are those people? What are those? Oh, dude, come on. All right, collect uh, materials, like craft, right replace with parts. Building. All right, impact hammer it is. All right, so for an impact hammer, I need a gas cylinder, and I need two gears to knock that out. I can make gears right now, but I need more scrap metal. So let's go ahead and we'll mark that as a needs-to-be-crafted type. Those materials by any means necessary. No one's coming back ever again, so go on and take what you need. Transports, homes, outposts, facilities, they've all been abandoned since the zone was decommissioned in 87. Most of those structures won't even be there the next time the instability scrambles the area. So loot to your heart's content. Just loot away. All right. Um, I'm still a little bit worried about the, the glowing... They aren't... Mo you. Out in the zone, all on your own. They grow so fast, don't they? And I'll be back at the helm. Been a long time, old gal. Didn't think we'd, uh, talk again after that whole Sasquatch incident. Yes, I was hoping to go another decade without hearing your voice again. What, did you finally talk Francis to death? Hello to you too, Oppie. And no, I'm still here. All right, we grabbed a couple of things. There's our plasma. We've got lead. It's probably not all that we need. For what we're trying to build here. 9 volt battery, rubber, fabric, plastic. Still not what we're looking for, I don't think. Anything in the bathroom? Why is that toilet up so high, dude? You have to get a running jump to get up on that thing. Maybe my character is just excessively short. 
All right, with the plasma generators. This one's already open. Listen, I'm putting off going anywhere near the zombies for as long as possible, all right? Because I know something bad's going to happen when I go over there. There's just no way that I walk over there and it doesn't do some kind of like, turn, like scary, like jump scare thing, all right? I know it's going to. I just, I don't want to go over there. I'm going to go over there now, but I don't want to. Is that a crash dummy? Hi, Christina. How are you? It turns out you were right. We had reports of several regions from the zone now, and they're all very similar. We have dummies out in the wilderness, and we also have them inside abandoned houses. We have them in gas stations, on the road, on top of signs. One report says on a roof. We spotted about 600 now. The file catalogs each and every one. Okay. That's not unnerving at all. What's in the tackle box? Canned food, I'll take it. We're gonna get hungry at some point on this trip. It's in the crate. Plastic and screws. A backpack. Honestly, I'd take that with me and put it in the back of the car so that you just have you can never have enough storage mediums, you know what I mean? Radiation. Hey, uh, uh, driver, I bet you're dying to hear all about the remnants by now. Oh, can you not? I'm a little busy trying to keep them alive. I'll keep to the basics, I promise. They deserve to know what they're getting into. Fine. I'm giving you 60 seconds. That is not nearly enough time to get... 55 seconds and counting. Okay, okay, okay. The remnants, in short, they're old objects that do all sorts of weird things. They bind themselves to people, and, and you're the latest victim. You and the car are inseparable now, so get acquainted. Once the remnant is bound to someone, they become gradually more obsessed with it. It takes over the victim's mind, until they go crazy and run off into the zone with it. No one has ever been able to resist its siren call. That fixation is probably worming its way into your brain as we speak. This is the first time we've ever got our hands on one. Uh, but we know all about the past remnants, and oh gosh, this one time it materialized as an old copper kettle, and the tea that came out of that thing, it was... And now I'm splitting the transmissions going to your receiver. Anything critical to your immediate needs will broadcast directly and immediately to your radio and headset. Anything not mission critical will be on a low priority frequency. Those transmissions will be recorded and indexed for you to listen to at your leisure. And by low priority, I mean just about everything that comes out of Tobias' mouth. Okay. We need one more plasma. I don't know if I saw any more generators around here. Maybe there's one out back of the garage, possibly. There's not one out back in the garage. I suppose it's also plausible that all the plasma is not in this one location and this was just a giant tutorial to teach me how to break open plasma generators. Let's hop back in the car. Let me stack up some loot, though, and get it where it needs to go. We'll kind of put things where they need to be. The plasma hammer. All right, car's packed up. Let's get back in and get on the road. This is pretty sick, though, dude. I'm liking the production values that they have going on right here. Like, I can tell already that if this game has any proceduralism to it for, like, replay value, I'm going to beat this game multiple times, and I can tell that already from just having played the first 45 minutes or so. This is rad. Like, this is... What is that thing? Nope. Absolutely not. What the hell was that? It's definitely chasing me. Oh, it wants me bad, dude. All right, we need to get down the road. We need to leave that thing alone. Is it still coming? It's hard to tell. I don't think it's still coming. I think we're good. All right, let me just pop the car and park real fast. Yeah, I think we're good, but I don't know what that was. 
It was some kind of like, oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Apparently, I parked right next to a place where lightning can arc to me. Pull the car back. Pull the car back. Pull the car back. There we go. So it goes out about that far. Okay. We'll just have to keep an eye on the arcs from here on out. I don't know if I can actually get in there to hit this plasma gen or if I'm going to get roasty toastied. I guess we'll try. I don't know. Maybe I'll pre-charge it. Oh, you can't pre-charge it. All right. I got a bad feeling that I'm pretty conductive, though. All right, grab all that. Oh, cool. It turned off the electricity. Nice. All right, give me the scrapper. I know I've cut this video hella long, but I'm actually like super enjoying myself right now. This is the kind of creative game that I hope to see from indie gaming like all the time. And it's the kind of game that I so infrequently get. The never ending deluge of carnival game roguelites <laughs> that never stops and never ends. And the never ending card games and whatnot. Like, this is a rare opportunity for me to, like, really, really, really have fun with a title that's inside the wheelhouse of what it is that I like to do. Oh, I don't like that foghorn. I don't know what that means. Oh, let's break this panel open, grab all that stuff. So I know I'm cutting this a little bit long, but I did want to actually bring us back to base here because I've played the game for, like, another six hours, and the demo is nowhere near complete. That's actually insane, but I wanted to show you some stuff that was not apparent from my video because the game comes across much simpler in my video than it actually is after you've played for like five or six hours. So this is our base after having played the game for seven hours. You upgrade this place. It's got roguelite mechanics. And this game is like a roguelite mixed with Escape from Kharkov. It's like Stalker and Jalopy had a baby, but like more complex than Jalopy. There's a lot of moving parts here. There's an extraction shooter angle to the game where every map uh, basically explodes after a certain amount of time and kills you if you don't get off of it and you lose everything that you've looted when it teleports you back to here. Like, there's a lot of interesting things going on with this game, and I think this game is going to be an enormous hit, dude. Like, it's really hard to express how dope this is going to be. But let me give you a walk through my base after upgrading it for the last four or five hours, and we'll take a look at what we have around here. So here's my car. I just died a little bit ago, and so my car is really beat up. And I'm trying to get back to where I was. But you do unlock new panels and new tiers of gear and new things that you can put in your car and not lots of new recipes to give you some idea of how much there is for you to interact with. This is the research station. All of these researches uh, will cost you loot that you found on the map. But wait, each one of these is a tab up here. Yeah. That's not all the researches. There's like 150 researches in this game that you can farm for to get like more loot space, a better car that's more resilient, higher tier parts, higher tier tools that interact with the world in multiple ways. Uh, to give you an example, you can get a pneumatic gun and the pneumatic gun will break generators, but the pneumatic gun will also knock locks off of doors. Uh, and it never tells you that. It never tells you that the pneumatic hammer will knock locks off of doors. It'll tell you that it'll knock sealed doors, and it will knock sealed doors. But there's all these little secret interactions with your tools in this game. Or I got a gun that allows me to basically weld parts off of cars so that I don't have to build them myself. And there's another gun. I'm sorry, the gun that welds things off of doors can also... Or welds things off of cars can also knock doors off of buildings and can explode like bad guys and stuff. Like, there's a lot of cool things you can do in this game. So there's all those researches. This right here, uh, this is the vacuum. So if there's any loot laying on the ground in your shop, you just hit this switch and it sucks it all into a central repository so that you don't have to inventory manage inside of here. You just get a big list of all the crafting materials you have. Great quality of life right there. It does it throughout the entire shop too. So like this is a recycler that I built. If I throw things in here, it recycles them. And then I can just run in here and hit the switch real fast and it'll suck them in there. And you don't even need to deal with it. I, there's so many cool things and look how big the game world gets after four or five hours Like you can go to all these different maps and they all have different hazards and different things going on and there's storms that move around the map uh, And you have to avoid them while you're trying to go to your storyline objectives. The voice acting is off the charts good 
this is a banger. Like, this game is going to blow people's socks off. I'll tell you that right now. I'm very, very impressed with this title after playing it for four or five hours. I cannot wait for it to release next month. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out an absolute just, this game is going to kill when it comes out, called Pacific Drive, which initially starts out a bit of a sleeper, which is what you saw in the video here. But if you wanted to see some more in-depth gameplay, go to my stream. I have a VOD there that's about five hours long where I did all this stuff for a live audience. And you can just see how deep the rabbit hole goes, where every time you think the demo is about to run out of content, it throws like another 50 researches at you and another bunch of maps at you and like another bunch of things to just work on and farm and the game is threatening and the game is punishing and you would think a game that has no monsters wouldn't be that scary but the game really really hounds you and like really forces you to constantly be preparing contingencies for like what if I blow a tire you know what if my car develops a crack in the seal and now radiation is getting in and I'm taking damage even more when I'm driving through an irradiated area it's just wild how many things there are to do in this game and so I did want to make this edit at the end just to make the video Video that much more robust and show you that like hey what you saw in this video here today was like the intro that's like the the absolute doorway to a 5,000 square foot house that just keeps getting better and better my only complaint so far is that a lot of buildings are copy pasta that's about it but man I cannot wait to play this game I will see you all later thank you for stopping on in and that's about all I got for you bye folks